It's Mark Gentili. I'm the managing editor of Northern Life. I'm up here in the, the top corner of your screen. Um, and the uh, the guy that you see uh, dominating the screen right now, of course, is uh, Greater Sudbury Mayor Brian Bigger, who has graciously uh, agreed to, uh, to sit down with us today and answer uh, some questions that we received uh, from from you guys, from readers, from members of the public uh, who were, you know, uh, you know, anxiously looking for information as we uh, continue to, uh, you know, exist in this state of emergency and this COVID nineteen pandemic. So I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for taking the time to. I know you're busy, but I thank I appreciate the, you taking the time to sit down with us this afternoon. Yeah, well, thank you uh, very much for the uh, opportunity, Mark, and and uh, I think it's really important. Uh, to communicate as effectively as we can uh, uh, throughout this entire uh, COVID situation. Okay. Um, how is how is uh, how is how are you coping with this? Uh, how is the city? Do you think, from your perspective as head of council, how are, are the the different parts of our uh, of our community sort of working together to to get us through this? Are are uh, I, I'm, I'm sure there's some hiccups, but just a high level, uh, how are we doing? You know, I, I'm proud of our community. I think we're uh, overall we're doing uh, quite well. Um, you know, uh, people are looking out for uh, each other. They're, they're calling friends and neighbors and, and family members and, and looking for people to uh, to help out. And I hear lots of uh, you know acts of uh, volunteering and and uh, and, uh, and and uh, helping others uh, in our community. As far as uh, city council goes, we had our first. Um, electronic uh, council meeting this week and, and uh, I thought it was a great success and it just shows uh, and proves that uh, you know we don't always have to uh, meet face to face we can use electronics uh, uh, technologies that are available today to uh, do those kind of the council uh, is constantly in contact I'm, I'm constantly in contact with council and, and with Dr. Sutcliffe and uh, Dominic Giroux and our senior staff here at the, the city and uh, you know on the phone with uh, uh, Chief Pedersen, uh, just uh, you know keeping in close contact with everybody uh, that is uh, overseeing uh, what's happening here in the community. But uh, uh, you know with uh, uh, the cases that we have so far, uh, we understand the background uh, of those cases. Uh, we know that uh, their travel or con close contact uh, related, and and so um, you know we're we're in relatively good shape. But it does not uh, doesn't mean that we need to uh, take our our kind of our foot off the gas pedal at this point in time. We absolutely uh, need to continue to uh, encourage the social distancing and and uh, hand washing and and uh, uh, you know one person going to the grocery store. All of these things and working from home as much as as possible uh, for everyone in the community and, mm -hmm. and, and i think that's been a, a successful uh, campaign i think a lot of people have had that message and understand it and uh and, and so um, you know we're in, in the best position we can be right now uh to uh you know to uh, move forward uh, through the the coming days and and uh, we're seeing how numbers are changing in, in communities around us and in other countries around us. And, uh, and so um, we just have to uh, keep on reinforcing the messages and, and uh, doing every single thing that we can do uh, to uh, uh, avoid the, uh, the, the impacts or delay the impacts of, of COVID-19. Right. Uh, I, I think uh, Penny Sutcliffe, uh, Medical Officer of Health for uh, for Public Health Sudbury and Districts, I think she said this week that, and she wanted, to, I think, to reinforce with people that, you know, there are there may only be six positive cases, but it's very likely that that this virus is circulating in the community, which is why it's important to maintain those social distances, right? Yeah, it's it's so important, and and uh, obviously, um, you know. I think it's smart to rely on the experts. Uh, Dr. Sutcliffe is our, our local expert. And, and so, uh, you know, the directions and the communications that have come out of public health and, and the city are, are really, uh, people are well advised to take them seriously uh, because, uh, you know, the, the effects of COVID-19 are real. And, uh, you know, people I'm sure are watching the news and seeing what's happening in Italy and China and other countries. And, and uh, we certainly don't want that, um, you know, when we're when we're uh, isolating and keeping our distances from people and washing our hands and, and uh, uh, all of those things, uh, we're, we're not only doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for our loved ones. We're doing it for other people in the community that might be uh, immune 
compromised. And, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, it's just a, a really good and neighborly thing to do uh, at the very end, uh, taking it seriously. Right. Um, can you give us a, you know, it's hard, it, 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 since you're in contact uh, with, with our healthcare, uh, you know, uh, upper echelon of our healthcare system in the city, I was kind of wondering uh, if you had any idea how our first responders, police, paramedics, nurses, doctors, um, you know, the front line of our healthcare system and our, uh, and our uh, protective services system, do you know how these people are, are, are coping with, uh, you know, under, this, the, under these, uh, you know, conditions that they have to work in? Well, uh, you know, clearly uh, these are stressful times for people on the front lines everywhere. Um, you know, whether uh, my wife works at uh, HSN in the hospital and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, many of these people have families at home and, and perhaps even people who are uh, immune compromised at home. And, and so, uh, you know, I'm sure if you talk to any of the, the front line uh, and first responders, uh, they absolutely uh, want to reinforce uh, the messaging and uh, as Chief Pedersen uh, said in his video this morning uh, that he released, uh, you know, when you see a police officer with a mask on, it's not only, uh, not necessarily only to protect the officer, uh, the officer, you know, may have been in contact out of necessity with a number of people that day and it's also uh, to protect the citizens. So, you know, this there's a kind of a, a new norm of, of watching out for others and, and being uh, respectful and responsible. And, uh, uh, you know, overall for first responders, I think, you know, there's a, a uh, you know, they understand that uh, uh, this is very serious and, and uh, um, it, it likely uh, will, uh, you know, we'll, we do anticipate more cases. And, and so, um, you know, we, we want to uh, do everything we can to help those first responders as well, uh, stay healthy and, and uh, be able to serve the public as, as, they, uh, uh, as, as they will. Okay. So we asked uh, our readers to send us uh, questions that we could put to you, uh, you know, that they were, that were weigh, weigh, questions that were weighing on their minds. And uh, we, we whittled it down to about the 10 best. We got a lot of duplicate questions, so we kind of combined things. And, um, but we got a lot of, you know, a lot of questions in the same kind of vein. So uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, maybe we can go down this list and I can put some of these questions to you if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Oh, sure, okay. So, uh, from the website subbury.com, uh, both Valley Life and Keep It Real, two of our, our commenters who uh, don't use their real names, uh, wanted to know, uh, want to know if there will be any layoffs of city staff who are performing any non-essential duties. There's a, a few questions under this vein, but one of the questions mm -hmm. they want to know is about, you know, layoffs among uh, municipal staff. Oh, well, okay, so... Clearly, we've been working hard to keep everyone uh, uh, working and, and productive. Uh, you know, as we progress through uh, the, the COVID uh, crisis that we see ourselves in, um, our economy will be stronger uh, when uh, people uh, can, can uh, have uh, incomes uh, uh, still coming through to their households uh, as, as best as uh, anybody can have. So uh, important. Uh, a topic for council to be discussing, and I can tell you that council is discussing this uh, uh, actively and and, uh, and trying to figure out how we we best do this. Um, you know, there are people that are working for the city uh, that are now doing jobs that uh, they wouldn't normally uh, have been doing, been reassigned, and there are people uh, that have been reassigned to jobs uh, just uh, you know based on need and and. Uh, um, and we deliver a lot of essential services. So um, many uh, people have been shifted to uh, supporting those particular roles because we are absolutely committed to uh, continue to deliver high quality essential services for the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been working closely with the union leaders and, and I can say uh, that, uh, you know, the relationship is, is uh, very good. Um, we're all working together in, in the best interests of, of the citizens. And so, um, you know, as, as the question that you, you specifically asked about layoffs, um, as I said, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to keep everybody productive and, and uh, uh, that's, that's our focus at this point in time. Okay. Um, what measures has the city, the same also from Valley Life and Keep It Real, they, they had similar mm -hmm. questions. Uh, what measures has the city taken to curb or has the city taken any measures to, to curb payroll costs for all staff, including management of uh, facilities and at City Hall? Um, yeah, yeah uh, are there any 
cost-saving measures in place um, going forward? Or can oh, there be? be? Because we deliver so many essential services, uh, we have been, uh, we really have been reassigning people where uh, people might be uh, off sick or unable to come into work. Uh, we're asking a lot of people to work from home right now. And uh, what, what we'll likely see is, uh, and, and I think we're starting to see, is uh, different uh, funding programs that are being offered by uh, uh, the federal and provincial governments. And, and uh, so, you know, there seems to be help uh, coming uh, along that way. Uh, and, uh, and so, um, you know, we, uh, we're responding and, and lessening actively uh, to uh, a, a situation that's, that's evolving on an hourly and daily basis. Right. It, and things are, you, yeah, okay. That, that's a, I think that's a good point to hit on is that, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's sort of tough to plan, uh, I guess, when, as you said, um, you know, things are evolving day to day and things will probably get worse before they get better. Well, I, I think there have been some, some encouraging announcements uh, uh, from other levels of government. Uh, municipalities get approximately nine cents out of all of, of every dollar that's collected of taxes. And, and, and so uh, the, the federal and provincial governments are a better positioned to uh, provide this type of support. It's in their, in their realm and their role. And, and, uh, and so, um, you know, and, and I see uh, some of those uh, plans are being developed uh, as we move uh, through this uh, situation. Okay. Uh, another uh, Sudbury.com reader, OPIC, um, would like to know, uh, will the mayor be requesting that the police chief advise council on how he is going to have our police department enforce the 14-day quarantine period for people returning to Canada in the Sudbury area? Will they be tracking cell phone locations on returnees? So, um, you know, I, I think we should all be uh, informing people if they're if they're unaware of uh, social distancing and, and messaging that's out there, and it's hard it's hard to imagine. Uh, but you know, it's all our responsibility to make sure that uh, we uh, continue to inform uh, people in our community, our, our friends, neighbors, people uh, that we we come across, and. Uh, um, you know, if you know somebody, call them, let them know that it's not only about them, it, it's about other people who might be immune compromised and, and, uh, and you know, uh, I, 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 the message are out there. It's dangerous uh, to, to go out and, and completely ignore uh, the, the instructions that uh, Dr. Sutcliffe and the provincial and federal governments have been, and the municipality have been uh, sharing with residents. So it's a sort of a, although he, he wasn't a, Andre Mare, the former uh, uh, ombudsman who was, you know, no, no friend of, of, uh, of his city council in his day, but uh, he, his method of, uh, of uh, enforcing, uh, uh, enforcing things was uh, the shame game. So I guess uh, you're, what you're suggesting is, you know, you can sort of shame your friends and family, perhaps, who are not following the, uh, the, self, uh, the self-distancing guidelines or the self-quarantining guidelines. You can sort of uh, perhaps... Uh, influence them in that regard is that what you're saying well what i'm what i'm saying is that uh, there may be some people who have interpreted the rules differently uh, than uh, most people understand them and, and uh, you know there's so many websites there's a there's a lot of information out there and so uh, you know just to be helpful and, and, and cl- perhaps clarify uh, to people what uh, what social distancing and self-isolation and quarantine uh, mean uh, with, you know, in this situation right now. And so, you know, the federal government did enact the Quarantine Act. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think at this point in time, um, you know, just all of us taking care of, of each other uh, is, uh, is a, a great approach. And, uh, and, you know, and I'm not encouraging people to, to shame anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm really encouraging people to just share their knowledge uh, and, and their concerns uh, with people, and uh, you know, I, I hope it doesn't get to the the point where uh, you know we would have to uh, be enforcing uh, this act. Um, and, uh, and and so, uh, I, I think we're doing okay right now with with, uh, with um, having those conversations. Okay, um, has that uh, discussion been had though with our 
uh, with our police service that, you know, it, has the discussion been had that we may have to get to the point where we are actually enforcing the Quarantine Act locally, where we are going to make sure that if you've been away, that you are staying at home and you're not interacting with the community. Has that discussion been had at, at the upper oh, level? Every, every discussion's been had, uh, Mark. And I can assure you, uh, um, so as a uh, mayor, uh, we have a committee, uh, uh, a community control uh, a committee uh, that uh, re reports to me and we have uh, Dr. Sutcliffe uh, calling in, Dominic Giroux and, and Joe Nichols, our head of EMS and, and uh, our uh, senior staff. We're, uh, we, we get updates from, uh, from Paul Pedersen and, and uh, and other people from the, the police as well. And so we're, we're updating on a, on a continuous basis. We've had uh, every, every conversation you can, you can think about. We've, we, you know, we've, we've had discussions about them. And, and, uh, um, and, and so uh, we're well on top of this. Uh, as far as the uh, enforcement piece, um, in fact, this is, this is because it's through the uh, Quarantine Act, um, the, the authority really, it starts off with public health. And, and, and so this is a, a unique situation. Um, uh, public health really has uh, the greatest powers, uh, but they would, they would uh, if they felt uh, there was a need, uh, that uh, public health uh, would ask, uh, or uh, you know, likely ask our police service to, uh, to be involved. Okay. Um... Gail Randall uh, sent me an email. She would like to know uh, where do where do or how do I report a Sudbury resident returning from the USA who is not self isolating? Is there a snitch line? So I, I'm not aware of anything uh, that would be a snitch line at this point in time. Whatever that was my phrase, by the way, was, not hers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what I what I would advise her to do though is is if she's if you know if she's shared her concerns and and uh, and, and she knows that people are just uh, you know absolutely uh, disregarding the directions of of uh, uh, Dr. Sutcliffe in, in public health. Um, then I, you know I, I think it's a fair ball to uh, call public health, let them know uh, that uh, there is a concern in the community where uh, there is somebody perhaps that's been uh, you know uh, should be in quarantine that's not in quarantine, and uh, and let the authorities follow through on that. Okay. So you know I, I think we're we're better than that in Sudbury. I, I I I'm not aware of any cases where people are are uh, you know just ignoring the quarantine entirely, uh, but uh, public health is a place to call. Yeah. From Gail's question, I, I think I take it that she does know someone who falls in that category. So uh, Tyler Norman uh, uh, wrote in to say, with Sudbury having a large retirement community, I imagine that we have a lot of snowbirds. Uh, we have all heard of the mandatory quarantine order and all the online banter to go with the possibility of, of completing this. My question is, what has or can the city of Sudbury do to support the people returning so that they will not need to potentially infect the community by going out and getting groceries or prescriptions? Are there programs available so these people can self-isolate and still get necessities? So I, I would say, first of all, uh, I, we know that there are a lot of people uh, who've come back from other destinations uh, that, uh, you know, they're being asked to uh, isolate or quarantine based on the timing when they came back. Uh, those, are, those are the directions. I'm also aware, uh, just, you know, just from the people that we know, uh, our neighbors and friends uh, and family, uh, that friends, family and neighbors are, uh, you know, making uh, grocery runs and, and runs to the pharmacy, what have you, uh, delivering uh, you know, those essential goods to the people uh, to allow them to, uh, to stay in, and, you know, drop the bag off outside the door kind of thing. And so, uh, I mean, uh, Melissa in our office is, is doing that for uh, her family. Uh, uh, you know, I just, I, I see this happening all over. So it's, it's really a, com a community-based solution. And, and uh, as we uh, uh, were talking at the start of this, uh, you know, there is so much uh, goodwill and, and so much of that volunteering uh, going on uh, throughout the community. Um, I know that pharmacies are, are making deliveries of uh, prescriptions as well. Uh, you know, so people who may have, maybe have not used those services in the past uh, should, uh, you know, find out if their pharmacy uh, does uh, uh, deliver. But uh, if there are challenges and, and, and um, 
the people don't have the guild. They don't have anybody who uh, uh, they can they can rely on or reach out to. They can always call three one one, and uh, and we will um, endeavor to to find a, a volunteer or community organization. Uh, to link them with uh, to provide those supports. Okay, that's good information. That's good information. Uh, Al Thorne right, wrote in and says, uh, Berry Down Road seems as busy as usual. I've seen long lineups of people at Costco at 8 a.m. not practicing physical distancing. I'm extremely concerned that many Sudburyans have not received or are choosing to ignore the federal and provincial government's strong advice to stay home as a major safety strategy to avoid community spread. Can you please comment and tell us what steps local leadership have taken to protect the citizens of Sudbury by encouraging people to stay home or by making it easier for them to do so or failing that by forcing them to do so? Well, uh, we are communicating uh, every day. Uh, our communications department, uh, you know, I have to give a shout out to them. They're working so hard. And this is every day, 24-7, uh, it seems, uh, you know, in, in long, long hours in the day. And so um, I know that we're doing everything we can at the city and, and getting communications out. Uh, I'm also doing extra communications and thank you, you know, you at Subbury.com and, and uh, other media for uh, the invitations to get out there and, and speak directly to the public. Uh, doing that, I know public health uh, communications is, is very active. And, and uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, Chief Pedersen uh, made his own YouTube video this morning. Uh, you know, we're all communicating as best we can uh, through, you know, the web, through the social media, through the regular media, uh, you know, every possible way that we can communicate messaging and keep on reinforcing it. Um, the other uh, thing is, I, as I was actually uh, driving to my office this afternoon, um, I, I got an alert on my phone. And so all levels of government are, are communicating uh, the, the same messaging. So I, I, I think... I think the messaging is out there. It's pretty hard not to hear it. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the other things that we have done. So what, what we can do as a municipality is, is uh, um, take to heart and, and, and uh, follow through on, on uh, uh, social distancing and, and uh, uh, having people work from home. And, uh, and so where there were larger gatherings in public spaces, we've closed, uh, you know, we closed arenas and, and, and uh, a lot of what uh, we had deemed as non-essential services, uh, particularly uh, particularly in, in uh, this situation, uh, we've uh, closed uh, uh, th those facilities down to the public. We've closed Tom Davies uh, Square down to the public, and um, and just recently we've closed the landfill down to the public, and and uh, all for the same reasons uh, to encourage uh, best behaviors in, in social distancing. Okay. And, uh, oh, sorry. So, we're actively uh, making those changes. Okay. Uh, just on the on the subject, we got quite a few questions and comments about the uh, the landfill closure. A lot of people uh, seem to not quite understand why it was necessary to you, you know it was felt uh, or public health felt it was necessary for the city to close uh, the landfill. A lot of people wrote in to, to, to us to say you know you're not really ne you're not really that close to people at the landfill. Uh, you know we we're not really sure what the what the issue is. Old wise one who is a commenter, regular commenter on Sudbury asked, you know, what, what is the rationale for closing the dumps? You know, people are pretty spread out. There seems to be no real need to do that. Can you kind of explain uh, what public health's rationale is for asking you got, asking the city to do that? So, uh, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day out. Uh, it was pretty nice and sunny uh, yesterday afternoon. It seems that people have decided that uh, this is a great time to do spring cleanup and, and get busy cleaning out their garage and 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 what have you. And, and uh, and so um, the numbers of people that have been uh, getting out and, and driving to the landfill has, has significantly increased over the last little while. Uh, yesterday, uh, you know, I was on the phone with, uh, with our CAO at Archer and, and uh, you know, at about three o'clock, they were saying we already had 1,600 uh, cars uh, come to the Sudbury landfill. And, okay. and so the volumes were up significantly. Um, employees working there were concerned um, they they are asked to interact with uh, uh, with uh, 
citizens who are out there at the dump, uh, people asking for instructions, people asking for, for assistance with uh, things, you know, uh, who knows, taking them off their trailers or uh, putting them in the sheds that are out there. And, and so there was concerns uh, um, with um, the amount of uh, social interaction that was happening out at the, uh, at the um, landfill, as well as the, the kind of the uh, interaction that is expected at the landfill of the uh, workers there. And, and so um, when, when our health and safety people went out there, they, uh, they went out there with the uh, Southern District uh, of Public Health uh, officials, uh, they really, uh, you know, they, they said we had to find a solution to this. And, and so um, the solution that we came up with uh, based on, on recommendation of, of, of staff was um, maybe we can just help people so they don't have to actually drive all the way out to the landfill. We'll pick up, you know, whatever garbage that they have on the side of the road. And so we're still continuing on picking up unlimited uh, organics and, and unlimited recycling. Um, what, what we are proposing is we're gonna increase the garbage bag limits of four bags because we had uh, people calling in and, and saying that now that they're home with the kids and, and uh, you know they're, they're finding it difficult to uh, stay within the four bag uh, limit, I, I want to still encourage people to recycle and, and, uh, and process the organics uh, like we have been all along. But, you know, we see this as a temporary situation uh, and we set it up so people don't have to go to the dump and it, so they can easily practice social distancing by uh, just putting their uh, garbage out to the curb and uh, the city will uh, pick it up and, uh, and take it out to the dump uh, uh, in the landfills, uh, uh, you know, at our expense. So you're saving uh, potentially some tipping fees, you're saving the gas and the time going all the way to the landfill. Okay. Um, so this is about real estate. Uh, Steve Caswell, who's a, a real estate agent here in uh, in Sudbury, asks, uh, with the real estate market likely to hit a major downturn, similar to 2008-2009, and a probable oversupply from a widespread loss of employment causing property values to decrease, uh, how do you suggest the city handles the eventual reduction in tax revenue from the future lower property taxes, property assessments? Well... That's a very so, specific question that Steve has. Yeah, you know, we're uh, right now, uh, you know, I, I've used this phrase a number of times. We're not there yet. Uh, we have no plans for anything uh, drastic uh, at this point in time. I can tell you, you know, get through this COVID uh, situation. Uh, we uh, are continually, uh, our city councillors, and, and myself for continually speaking with our senior management team. Um, you know, we're responding, we're strategizing, we are thinking about the future, but I can tell you, um, you know, we're, we're asking for a lot of different information and proposals on, on how we can deal with and respond uh, to the different situations. So, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of thought in behind the, the example I, I just gave you on the landfill. Um, so I know there's a lot of anxiety and, and financial stress out there by many people, and many people concerned. But as I said earlier, um, you know, these are uh, still early days uh, for us here in Sudbury. Um, uh, we're seeing that uh, other levels of government are, are coming through with uh, some of the uh, funding programs to relieve uh, that stress and to relieve that financial distress, uh, the pressures off, off of uh, people in in our country and, and so these are you know this is these are not budgeting decisions this is this is um you know these are investments in our future and uh and as we continue to invest at, at different levels of government uh, we're investing in in our future uh recovery as we come out the other end of uh, this situation are you anticipating or should we be anticipating you know uh i mean uh, people have said we should be anticipating uh, you know, higher levels of bankruptcies, you know, the, you know, forfeitures, those sorts of, those sorts of things as a, as economic fallout from, from COVID-19. Is that, uh, I, is that part of those high level discussions that, uh, that you've been having? Well, I, you know, we, we are fully aware of what's happening in the community as far as uh, the challenges for businesses and particularly uh, not uh, businesses that are deemed as non-essential, um, you know, uh, 
Uh, we're uh, reaching out to the business community uh, through our economic development department and, and uh, uh, there are ongoing phone calls and, and a lot of resources on, on the city's webpage. And, and so uh, you, if you go to the city's uh, site, um, you know, um, there's a listing of uh, virtually all of the programs that have been made available to this uh, date that might help any kind of a business uh, uh, that is uh, seeing uh, you know, those uh, financial uh, challenges uh, through the crisis. But, uh, you know, what we've done uh, for uh, for businesses and, and for citizens, uh, um, even prior to the provincial uh, declaration of a, of a provincial emergency was uh, to deal with uh, property, ta property taxes. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, for property taxes that were uh, originally due on April 2nd, uh, we've uh, kind of pushed that date out uh, to June 4th and said, look, uh, you know, we're going to defer any kind of interest or penalties that would be uh, accumulated uh, if, you know, if you are unable to uh, pay your taxes uh, prior to June 4th. And the June 4th, in my mind, uh, it, was a, it was a date. Uh, it was really the next payment date uh, that had uh, already been established uh, for our taxes. And, uh, and so... Obviously, uh, coming up uh, uh, upon that date, uh, you know, we'll have a better idea of, of what's happened uh, and, and what actions we need to take as, as we come up on that date. And, uh, and I'm sure, uh, if need be, a council will reassess. But uh, you know, we've we've taken um, the, uh, you know a proactive uh, approach to try to relieve some of that financial stress for businesses and individuals. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that. Uh, you know, they will feel uh, some relief in that. Okay. Uh, reader Mark McKillop uh, is very concerned about uh, the property tax question, and he kind of feels that uh, there are you know, not enough people know uh, what measures are in place to help people with property taxes. So um, if I can just, if you can kind of explain a little bit more about what, what you're saying there. So if, if someone can't you know feel are financially strapped there they they don't feel they can pay their property tax for uh, for April or May uh, they will not be penalized for those uh, if they can't pay that but do they have to I mean are those for pre-authorized people or are those people who pay their property tax monthly I mean is there a can you kind of explain how that works okay so uh, again uh, yeah happy to explain again so the property taxes that were due on April 2nd uh, won't see any penalties or interest accrued uh, if they're June 4th. And that's that's the uh, decision by council that we've gone with uh, at this point in time. And uh, by the way, uh, we also extended that to uh, water and wastewater uh, bills uh, for uh, for city uh, utilities that were uh, providing water and wastewater. So this should give people about two months to get ahead of or at least figure out their finances. As I said, uh, it's also an opportunity for us to better understand all of the supports out there and, and uh, uh, you know we, this is a quickly evolving situation uh, so um, you know we've set that uh, data forward uh, for the many people who are out there who are uh, paying monthly uh, we also have help and, and uh, anyone enrolled in the pre-authorized uh, tax payment plan uh, who feel that they're going to have difficulty in making their payments can contact uh, the city and uh, you know the city's number three one one is easy to remember. Contact the city uh, to review their payment options, and, and uh, you know we're fully aware of, of the, the situations. We're not trying to add stress to people. We're trying to provide relief, and so I, I am confident that uh, um, our, our tax department or uh, water wastewater uh, can uh, provide uh, relief uh, where uh, where people will feel they need it. So, so basically, if I don't mean to keep harping on this, I just want to make sure that people understand. If they feel that they uh, they need a bit of a break on their property tax, uh, they they should call three one one and uh, and 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 get them and, and get the information they need to get their name to let the city know. Look, I need some help um, for the next two months or whatever. Is that what you, that's? They yeah, should contact so, the city. So yeah. The intent right now. They, the, what I'm saying, I guess, is that people should just not, if that if they can't pay, they should let you know that they can't pay, not just that they should just skip paying. Well, I, I think that's the situation. If there is an uh, automatic payment uh, situation, um, we we can 
work with them to change that automatic payment and, and that's the process for people who are making those monthly automatic payments. Uh, for people who would uh, come in and, and, and write a check uh, and what have you, uh, independent of that uh, monthly payment uh, process, uh, so you know their decision, uh, they can they can pay the um, taxes uh, as uh, they were able to um, between April second and, and June fourth. Uh, no penalties uh, or no and, and no interest will be accrued. Um, the the uh, provincial uh, and, and uh, federal governments uh, came out after uh, our announcement and our decision and, and uh, uh, basically the same. It's not eliminating the bill. It's deferring your the the uh, need for you to pay uh, these bills uh, by deferring or sorry by eliminating the interest uh, and, and penalties that might have been accrued uh, to give people the opportunity to. Uh, to uh, you know, manage their finances a little bit better. Understanding that uh, finances uh, for some people uh, who you know, might have been laid off in, in other situations, uh, that was the thought at the time uh, to give them uh, more flexibility in, in managing their finances. Okay, now if someone does defer their, uh, you know, their payments, um, are they going to be expected to pay the full amount of April, May taxes, for example, in June, or will those amounts kind of be blended into their tax payments going forward? So, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you the exact details. Like I said, we're, uh, uh, we will reassess it before we get to June. Um, obviously, uh, you know, our intent is, is to not put additional financial stress on people. Um, but I can also say that, you know, from my, my perspective, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I think blending uh, probably is a is a solution, and uh, and so we'll have to consider all of that. But it, but there's there's a good intent behind this, and, and it was just to provide uh, more flexibility uh, to people. You know, you know, on the other hand, um, you know, the taxes that we collect through the levy they match, they're e exactly equal to what it costs to deliver the services that we provide to the citizens every year. And so, um, you know, if we don't collect the taxes, then we don't have the money to, we, we have to figure out services uh, that we would cut. And, and so, uh, you, know, the, I, you know, the principal amount, if, it, if, if I can call it that, um, the actual amount of taxes, uh, at this point in time is not being impacted. It's just, you know, not going to uh, uh, pressure people and, and, and uh, charge interest or penalties, okay. uh, you know, if they don't pay before June 4th. Okay. The city must be saving some money, though, on, um, like, uh, uh, with facilities like arenas and stuff being closed. There, there must be some savings in that regard. So, so arenas and, uh, you know, a lot of our parks and, and recreational facilities operate um, and I'll call it a subsidy. Uh, they're not. They're not set up to make a profit. And, and uh, the reason that uh, they're operated uh, by municipalities is that they, they generate profits uh, generally. And, you know, and that's why the public sector doesn't offer a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, programs uh, in, in the majority of cases. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, we're not. We're we're uh, we're not making any money on on uh, closing these facilities. We're we're we are moving uh, people to keep them productive uh, to other jobs. Uh, you know, with the interest of, of uh, uh, help uh, our citizens are in, in our um, stay in in, uh, in situations where uh, they can they can work from home, uh, where uh, you know social distancing is is uh, is being practiced and. and uh, um, you know, we can come through the other side of this. Uh, the COVID situation is as best we can. Okay. So there's no, there's no like by not operating chillers and things like that. There's no, um, you know, expenditure saving and having arenas uh, and things like that and pools closed down. Well, they they do operate at a net loss. No, I understand um, that. I'm just saying the operating costs must be lower because they're not in operation. Is what I'm saying. But we also uh, might have uh, been collecting revenues to offset that. So, right. um, you know, we have also, you know, 
uh, where we we enclose the arenas, we're also uh, not collecting any revenues. I so see. a number of it sort of balances terms, out then. For example, we're canceled, and yeah, so so um, yeah, so it's not entirely a, a, a savings of, of expenses. Uh, we also um, you know uh, have have lost the, some revenues, and, and so it, I mean it plays into the total picture and everything we're doing, but. Uh, you know, the number one priority, number one focus at this time is to do what's right uh, for the citizens and for the public uh, relative to the COVID crisis. Okay. Um, John Cochran, I don't know if that's his real name, but John Cochran uh, says he's hearing that there might be an increase in property crimes and business break-ins. And the police told us today, in fact, that uh, there uh, there had been, um, you know, I think 12 break-ins uh, in the downtown area. Um, you know, over the past week or past couple of weeks, uh, as business of, businesses have been closed and that sort of thing, and I, um, uh, so I, I, what, what, what he's wondering is, um, with so many, you know, non-essential businesses being closed uh, and that sort of thing, um, is there have there been conversations with uh, Greater Sudbury Police Service about uh, increasing patrols around non-essential closed businesses to to kind of help prevent. Uh, you know, smash and grabs and break-ins. So um, I had uh, a long and extended uh, conversation with uh, Chief Pedersen. Uh, um, you know, I was uh, I was made aware of this uh, very uh, very early on. Um, one of the uh, business owners who actually I called him to our office and I called him back and and uh, uh, you know, understanding the situation, called uh, Chief Pedersen and uh, you know. There is a lot of concern in in the downtown, uh, particularly. Um, I, I, I think it's uh, you know part of the general situation. There are a lot less people on the streets. At the same time, it's a little bit complicated because we do have people uh, who are shift workers, and so uh, you know how how and how would you uh, you know I, I guess I'm getting into a topic, but you know. What I can say is is that uh, Chief Pedersen uh, is fully aware. The police are fully aware. Uh, they're actively uh, out on the front lines, and uh, and I believe and uh, in, in, in trust in, in uh, uh, the the uh, work that uh, Chief Pedersen and, and our Greater Sudbury Police Force are doing in, in our community, and, and they are the experts. So um, you know we've we've provided uh, additional funding. Uh, in a number of ways to the, the police. Um, I, I actively ask for uh, additional presence of police in, in the downtown in, in the past. And, and so um, Chief Pedersen is fully aware of the situation. And, uh, you know, I've, um, I think one of his responses, uh, uh, one way to communicate back to the community um, was uh, in him creating that YouTube video. Uh, which uh, I'd encourage you if you if you don't have it on uh, Sudbury.com. Oh, it's on uh, Sudbury.com. Yeah, it is. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and and so, uh, so you're familiar with that. And, and uh, um, you know, I I, um, I I want to you know roll where I can, and uh, and that's uh, I get uh, we do the best for our community. Okay, uh, on a, on a similar sort of topic. Um, What's the possibility of um, uh, of, of imposing a curfew um, uh, in the city? Uh, you know, is that is that something that's been discussed? Uh, do you, is that something you think is a good idea? Um, is you know, I, I assume it's within the city's uh, powers to impose a curfew. Um, well, um, according to um, uh, the legislation. Um, if we were to call a state of a municipal state of emergency, I, I believe that there would be, I guess, a possibility of, of calling uh, on a, a, you know, the community for a curfew. But a but a citywide curfew uh, would impact people who are, uh, you know, working uh, shift work. Uh, you know, the mines are hitting, and, and uh, you know, appropriately according to the legislation, a lot of uh, of, of procedures in place. Uh, I understand. But uh, so we have a number of shift workers and number of businesses that uh, might be affected by, uh, you know, the calling of a curfew. The other thing is I, I am aware that, uh, you know, there are some in policing that, uh, that uh, you know, don't feel that curfews are actually that effective. And, and uh, 
And so, you know, I've been in touch with uh, Chief Pedersen. I, I can I can tell uh, your uh, leader. Um, you know, we've we've discussed the incidents that have occurred. Uh, we've discussed all all opportunities. And uh, it, you know, if there's a conversation that needs to be had uh, at a later point, uh, uh, you can be sure I'm following uh, the entire situation. But uh, I think Chief Pedersen's uh, uh, video uh, on YouTube uh, is uh, pretty self-explanatory. And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I want to hear what uh, measures that the, the chief, uh, uh, you know, is, is planning on implementing, uh, you know, through his authority and, and uh, his uh, expertise. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you would like to uh, to add or or uh, or to say to the public who are watching uh, today, uh, today, Mr. Mayor? Well, I, I just I, I want to say how uh, proud I am of, of our community for uh, following the directions of, of public health, and, and uh, uh, you know, up to this point, uh, we're doing we're doing okay, and, and, and so uh, you know, we will get through this. Um, in, and I know that uh, city councillors are very active in the community. They're looking for ways to contribute. They're they're, they're relaying messages and information they're getting from. Uh, their constituents to the community right up through uh, to myself and the senior management team at the city and, and so those messages are, are getting through um, and uh, it's impacting the, the types of decisions that we're making uh, and, and making quite quickly I, I've changed a few governance uh, uh, processes where um, you know I, I believe we've uh, uh, one of the keys for us is to streamline decision making processes and, and uh, respond as quickly as possible to uh, concerns that uh, you know, we uh, identify or, or the community identifies. So, um, you know, the days are days right now are, are very busy. Um, they're they're quite long, from you know eight in the morning till ten o'clock at night, um, and uh, and things are changing very quickly. But uh, uh, I think that we've demonstrated that uh, we're we're right on top of things. Our announcements are right uh, on par or in queue. Uh, with uh, the provincial and federal governments and uh, and the directions that we're getting from uh, public uh, health officials and and so relying on the experts is is a, a, a good thing to do and, and uh, you know everyone uh, can do well to encourage their neighbors and friends and family uh, to work from home uh, wherever possible to uh, to uh, practice social distancing stay at home if you can uh, wash your hands frequently and, and all the messages that we've been hearing uh, over the last little while. Right. Good advice. I, Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I appreciate your time today. I, I know I, you know, we, we have more questions than we could ask, uh, so I'm hoping we'll be able to do this uh, with you again, um, hopefully next week, if we can set something up to, to keep people in the loop about what's going on at City Council and get some of those questions answered, uh, you know, help keep uh, the public reassured. Um, to readers, uh, you know, uh, head to subbury.com. We have all of the latest news uh, about uh, locally, nationally, uh, and provincially about what's going on with COVID-19. Uh, we have a dedicated COVID page um, there. If you have questions, ask us. We will try and get the answers uh, for you. If you are stuck at home, our, one of our new media reporters, Heather Green Oliver, is also uh, at home with her five-year-old son, Tommy. She's broadcasting live on Facebook uh, every day with uh, learning and fun and games, just uh, you know, a little interactive community to uh, to give to give you and uh, your children, uh, you know, uh, something to look forward to or something to distract you uh, during these uh, long days of self isolation. Um, so stick with us. Um, thank you very much for your time, Mr. Mayor, and we will talk to you all again soon. Thank you very much, Mark. From for Subway.com, I'm Mark Gentile.